Hey everybody, I'm Random Bystander here, and this is not a drill. We got a code honk, ladies and gentlemen. Untitled Goose Game is here. Repeat, Untitled Goose Game is here. We have to tell the world. Oh my goodness. Rory, the Untitled Goose is here. Perfect. On November 20th, 2019, Switch owners would be playing a new game. Not a game starring an Italian plumber. Not a game starring an elf boy. Even though that came out on the same day. Nope, Switch owners would be playing a game starring a goose in Untitled Goose Game. Normally this would be the part of the review where I would talk about the backstory, who the developers were, why the game was made, and how much I've been WAITING for a game like this to finally come out. But I have a video about all that and my impressions on it back when I thought the game release date would be announced back in E3. I was so silly back then, which you could check out in the description below. However, to sum it all up, Untitled Goose Game is a stealth puzzle indie game. Developed by House house and published by Panic Games, where you play as, shocker, a goose. And that is all you need to know before playing it. This review will be as spoiler free as possible. There's no grand story, but trust me when I say you want to go into this game as blindly as you can. It's an experience that is more than worth the money. I will not be mad if you stop this video and go play this game and come back here when you do. It's okay, I'll wait. I've been waiting for this review for months, so let's not waste any time. Let's fucking do this. Press Y to honk. Not pressing X like in the demo, but as the saying goes, it's not about the button, it's about the honking one does with that button. You are indeed, as the game promises, a horrible goose. Along with honking, you use the B button to run, the A button to grab things, the left trigger to duck, as in the action of ducking, you can't become a duck, you're a goose, big difference, and use the right shoulder button to spread your wings and fly like a goose. Honkity honk. Okay, you don't actually fly or anything, these are just for show. But you parade them so majestically. I never played as a goose before, but I believe they nailed the way how a goose moves. The goose has two legs, and it has this adorable little waddle. You can only move a certain speed, you can only turn in a certain way. It feels like you are actually a goose! Also, the sound of the pitter-patter of goose feet is a very nice touch. It's the goose ASMR I never knew I wanted. Speaking of goose sounds, get used to hearing this bird sing. I just love how comedic the honk is. It makes my day every time I hear it. And you would think I would get annoyed by it, but no. I loved every time I got the chance to honk. I love how if you keep honking repeatedly, it kind of sounds like the goose is laughing at the villagers. It's just so funny. I want it as a text message ringtone. Hello, this is Random Bystander here, Random Speaking. Although I wonder, what other edited sounds could come out of the mouth of a goose? And so the game begins. I've never been so happy to see a title screen in my entire life. <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't cry. I really love the art style of the game. It truly gives off a simple vibe, and gets the whole quiet village atmosphere nailed to a tee. You can tell what the objects are, yet the design is nothing overly complicated, and complement the graphics visually. Although the villagers don't have faces, slightly weird. There isn't much music in the game, more on that later, so oftentimes you'll hear atmospheric noises, like the sounds of birds chirping, sound of the river flowing, and of course... And these sounds help create the feel for this location, as you get a sense that this town is calm, routine, and everyone has a specific way of doing things. I also love the inhabitants we have in the village as well. We have the farmer, the scared boy, the rich dude, the rich lady, the pub owners, and the scary shopkeeper with a broom. And this goose is going to ruin each and every one of their lives. You have certain tasks that are given to you, all in cursive or in typewriter fashion. Gosh, goose, not only do I wonder how you write in cursive, but you have a typewriter too? Teach me your ways, almighty goose! And your goal is to complete your to-do list. These tasks involve messing with the villagers and all sorts of hilarious antics, getting into specific areas, stealing the villagers' belongings, and collecting items to arrange them in sets like a picnic or shopping cart. But mostly, it involves being a real pain in the to all these villagers. I've been a real jerk. The things you do to these inhabitants of the village, your wicked deeds you perform, are some of the most evil, petty, diabolical things I've ever seen done in a video game. Out of all the gaming villainy in the universe, this goose is certainly up there. And it's so much fun to be bad. It really is a lot of fun to cause mischief as this goose. There's something about causing trouble that's just so enjoyable. I think it's the light-hearted atmosphere combined with the genuine hilarious antics that happen 
that make it satisfyingly hilarious whenever you are able to pull off some mischief. This game made me laugh hard at some of the stuff I was able to pull off as this goose. I won't spoil too much, as honestly the best part is discovering on your own what you can and can't do, and how you can be the Dennis the Menace of geese in this village. Yes, let us continue to be an evil goose. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a real jerk. But being a horrible goose is not an easy job, as you have to not only solve puzzles, but also be sneaky in the process. This involves you sneaking behind the villagers to take their items, or finding clever ways to enter areas. Oftentimes, if they catch you trying to be very naughty, they will take away the objects you need for said puzzle, or shoo you away from the place you need to be. This requires you to think about your surroundings, yet you have unlimited chances to try something and experiment on what villagers may or may not interact with. Even if you do something that needs to be fixed or lose an item you can't find, you can always reset the game to have everything set to normal, and your progress will still be saved. All this is one of Untitled Goose Game's greatest strengths, experimentation. I was always trying to think of ways to use my tools to my advantage, and many of these brought multiple solutions which brought hilarious results, such as the characters doing funny actions, the goose doing something humorous in general, or something I never even thought possible. Your honk will echo down the well! Your honk will echo down the way! This includes a bunch of hidden challenges you can unlock as well, which encourages more experimentation. And that's fucking awesome! I spent a good couple hours just seeing what was possible to do in this game, and I know a lot of streamers I watched did too. It was amazing the things you discovered, especially the little things. There were so many minor details that I just have to praise this game for. I love it. Speaking of things worth praising, I absolutely adore, and I mean adore, the use of music this game has. Most of the game is relatively quiet, but often depending on your actions, you will hear sudden bursts of sounds. You sneaking behind someone, the music will suddenly creep in. You're being chased, the music gets loud and bombastic. Something funny happens, you hear a tune that fits perfectly. Not to mention these short snippets of piano fit well with the game's art style, and sound really good, as they never got annoying when playing the game. If anything, and actually helped raise the suspense, but also in a goofy and lighthearted way. Give that pianist a raise. I said pianist. All right, enough of me gushing about this goose. No game is perfect, so what didn't I like about Untitled Goose Game? I will say the game has some glitches. Not a lot with me, but I saw a good few people on Twitter and on Twitch having issues with the game, which included going through walls, characters suddenly not moving, and a lot of uncontrollable shaking. The game is fairly new, so I expect bugs like this, and I'm sure they will be patched momentarily. The second thing I don't like are the ball rolling puzzles of this game, and they are the fucking worst. Thankfully, the ball rolling mechanics are optional with the main story, and are only needed to complete optional challenges. But I really did not like them. It feels like you don't have any control with kicking this ball, which makes sense a goose would have trouble rolling objects, but I wish there was a way to make it less tedious, as it was my least enjoyable thing about this game. Come on, just move the cabbage. Just, just move the cabbage. Please, no, no! I can't! The last complaint I keep hearing is that the game itself is very short. And yeah, I can kind of see where people are coming from. The game's main story can be completed in about two hours, and the whole game itself can be completed in a few hours more. But for games like Untitled Goose Game, you enjoy every second with the game, whether you're completing the task or just goofing around. Goosing around? Once again, there are so many objects you can interact with, and often more than one way to solve a puzzle. Combined with the fact that there's post-game content, which includes new missions and timed missions, there's plenty of hours to be a real jerk. I found myself constantly entertained after post-game. Yes, there is a time where the goose game must come to an end where you beat everything, but like a lot of indie games, this game is an experience, and it's not about the length of the journey, but how you spend it. And I personally really enjoy it. That being said, while this game was a joy for me, and and many others, it is not for everyone. There's no action, no RPG mechanics, no gripping story, just sandbox stealthy puzzles as a goose. Some people may not enjoy this type of game, and that's okay. Some people may think it's too short for 15 to 20 dollars. Others may not like the art style. This game may not be your cup of tea. It's not a perfect game, no matter how much I gush about it. Despite my nearly 10 minute ramble, you may be wondering if I recommend Untitled Goose. Do I really have to answer that question? Yes! I personally cannot praise this game enough for the amount of joy I felt when playing this. The amount of times I laughed at the comedy of the game, and how I savored every minute 
playing as this goose. I've waited for this game since I heard about it nearly a year ago, and it was more than worth the wait, as House House and Panic Games really outdid themselves, and deserve the praise and hype they are getting for this game. It is selling like hotcakes on not only the eShop, but on the Epic Games Store as well, where it's a PC exclusive there. And I've seen tons, and I mean tons, of fellow content creators stream it and or discuss it on YouTube. Untitled Goose Game, in my opinion, is one of the funniest games of 2019. And if anything I said in this review interests you, try it yourself and see why this game is so honking great. And see why this game is so honking great. See what's up with the sound effects machine. Ah, let's try it now. So try it yourself and see why it's so fucking great. Ah, much better. Honk!